Look, I'll get started on this week's video. Gentlemen, I just witnessed a fascinating conversation. You must watch it. It was on Rule Zero this week. The subject was on long-term relationships. It had a fantastic panel. It was excellent. Very, very deep advice given today. And it had, had a lot to do with the deep need that men have for long-term relationships with women. Yes, we do need that at some level all of us what level that is okay but guys take a look at take a look at that episode if you find it interesting uh on one of the dragon ships or the next one we can get into this in a lot of detail uh i definitely have a lot of experience in this particular subject counseled many men uh and many personal years of experience much more than the panel no no disrespect intended at all in fact they were fantastic and great uh, please go watch it so with that in mind, welcome to the Dragon Ship. This is the weekly video that I'm going to produce for you guys and the members so that you can enjoy a little bit from Thor until we have our next meeting. So for this week's video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about social acuity. And what do I mean by social acuity? Let me explain. I'll read the definitions for you here so that you can understand why it's so critical for every man's success and happiness in life outside of himself. Okay, you say. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the definitions of social and acuity, and let's look at it in Google. Okay, so what does the dictionary say about social? It says the first definition is relating to society or its organization. Great. Doesn't say a lot, but it says about societal organization. The secondary definition, and here's the one I'm going to focus on here, is it's enjoying other people, sociable or social persons relating to interaction with other people, especially for communication, pleasure. For example, a busy social life or relating to human beings as a group, a family, a marriage are all social institutions and social structures for living naturally or in groups of communities. This is social. Wow, there's quite a bit here on being social on Google. So social is something that I have quite, has quite a few meanings. But in the context of what we're going to talk about today in this video, it's going to be that second definition right there. Now we're going to couple that with acuity. I'm not sure everybody understands what acuity actually means. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the definition of acuity says. Here's what it says. And there's several definitions of what we're going to look at. Okay. Ah, so acuity, it is sharpness, clarity, vision, hearing, perception, awareness of intent and surroundings. Wow, that's very interesting. Uh, secondary definitions are such the ability to see, understand something easily, mental, visual, political, social kindness, sharpness, and awareness. Now that's really interesting too. So now we're going to use those definitions and we're going to couple that in conjunction with social. So social acuity, and this has been done before by psychologists when they're studying depressives. So you'll see, uh, there are studies out there right now that men, people that are very depressed, particularly men, lack social acuity. So they lack the ability to see and perceive in social environments, and that creates anxiety and depression. Uh, easy to find out, type in social acuity in Google and you'll see those studies. So something we want to be aware of and want to work on. So social acuity is simply the ability and inclination to perceive the psychological state and being of others and act accordingly, okay? According to what your own mental point of origin is, is of course we're gonna couple that together here. 
And this is very interesting because there are some, like I said, medical studies out there right now about depressed men that lack social acuity. And that's the ability to pick up on common social cues, both verbal, nonverbal, and that would be body language, impressions, facial movements, things like that, how to stand, where to stand. Uh, and of course, it's circ circumstantial and timing are all parts of social acuity and most importantly, communication, verbal skills when interacting with people. I think this becomes very, very important, particularly when it comes to the fact that a lot of depressive has high anxiety. And when you look at anxiety and just in the manosphere, a lot of anxiety when men want to meet women is just in the fact that approach anxiety is so high. And I hear commonly with so, so many men and I completely understand is what do I say? Uh, besides I can say my name, how are you? Maybe a compliment. What comes next? It seems like such an intense hurdle because the anxiety of not seeing her cues, her visual cues, whether it's a yes or a no, leaves you kind of in the dark. And we fear the unknown, gentlemen. So if we can get a little bit better communication skills verbally, we can bypass just a little bit of those social cues that are nonverbal until we acquire enough acuity to see them. So let's talk about just a little bit. Of course, there'll be much more detail on the Dragon Ship monthly. However, I'd like to discuss or at least give you some food for thought for now on what we can do to improve some levels of social acuity in our body language perception and how you look at other people. So let's talk about some of the critical skills and that is listening. So to keep social acuity highs, you must learn how to listen to people in conversation and keep in mind, there's essentially five levels of listening. I'm going over this extremely briefly we will go over it in much more detail as we move along in the dragon ship. And we will kind of tailor that with some exclusive reading and some exercises that we can go practice in the field. Uh, the five levels are listening, which you might've heard before in a business environment. It basically, the first level is ignore, and that's ignoring people. <laughs> you know, we're pretending to listen to them, but we're not actually hearing anything they have. And then there's selective hearing, which is basically what most people do now. We basically hear what we want to, and of course, that's confirmation bias. And that's extremely popular with everyone right now. You can see it in the political environment. Confirmation bias only, bias only looks at what we agree with, what we want to see, and it confirms our biases, and therefore we don't have to hear anything else, and we don't. And you'll see this a lot. You can see examples of this on any YouTube channels like Fresh and Fit when they're talking to the ladies. Tons of confirmation bias out there, particularly when it comes to feminism. But that's just not the only thing. Okay, selective hearing, which is basically hearing what we want to hear. Extremely popular today. And then there's attentive listening, okay? Uh, and then we have the highest level of listening, which is empathetic listening. Uh, we try to achieve attentive listening and empathetic listening as our goals. We really need to consciously think about this because many times, you know, when you're attentively listening, you want to interject your thoughts and opinions immediately or even engage someone in, in a petty argument over something that actually has no value, such as politics, opinion, something, oh, I want to set that person straight. In a social environment, it really kind of sometimes means nothing. It could be a waste of time unless you're getting some enjoyment of just sheer argumentativeness or just banter. A lot of times it's not productive. It doesn't endear you to the group and it actually makes you an outsider and you don't want to engage in that. You want to have some value, uh, especially so that you can be engaging when you are being social. So try to avoid those sort of, of situations. When you're asked your opinion, uh, learn how to do a redirect or a power flip, change that subject, whatever it is, so you can stay engaged and practice attentive listening or empathetic listening. Okay. Uh, and, you know, if you argue enough, it's actually destructive to your, you know, your relationships, even just your, you know, acquaintances. So consider this for now. What I'd like you guys to do is consider attentive listening is our goal for now in the next week or so. In all your social circumstances, this is, uh, in all honesty, good, but not perfect. It's a good start. Here's what we're doing. We're giving our conversation partners our complete attention and listening to every detail they provide and we're not distracted. We're not shutting them out. 
selectively and we're not changing the subject. However, what keeps us from being a real five star, fully focused listening emotionally and uh, empathetically is our analytical and judgmental mind, which I struggle with this, is while they're speaking, we're comparing their statements to their own points of view, to our points of view, and deciding whether or not we're in agreement with them. Uh, like we are in a debate with them or we're going to debate them. This is so hard for me personally to get over. I've had to work hard to do it. And I think everybody will agree as you start to become a better listener, you'll have, uh, you'll have struggles with this because we've all been trained by this, by watching our modern world and media. It's always this sort of attentive listening with this kind of, oh, do I agree with this? Do I not agree with this? You know, and that does prevent us from fully hearing the emotion and then being empathetic. And we want to be able to identify those things. So that's okay for now. You can continue. It's a tentative is good because we want to hear stories from you on how this works when you're engaging in conversation with anybody, but particularly if it's with a woman, let's practice. This is a, um, this is actually a, a more than fair way, uh, two way conversation with both parties that are attentive because you're expected to provide an equal exchange. But in fact, we're still both assessing and judging super common uh, with our own reasoning and logic. And uh, you can be very engaging like that and you can avoid the debate. Then you start to move into empathetic listening. And this is both the final and most desirable level of listening. And it's kind of the polar opposite of the first level, which is just ignoring. Empathetic listening, we give our attention to the person we're talking uh, to. We're just not zeroed on what they're saying, but we are putting ourselves in their shoes, imagining generally what it would feel like or, or what, it would, what it, the experience would be in that situation or whatever they're describing to us. So we're making a strong effort to understand you know, where they're actually coming from and, and put ourselves in that mind state. This is real different than sympathetic listening. I myself, tend to struggle with this type of listening because I tend to move into that sympathetic side which still puts a barrier between me and fully understanding what they're saying. And that's just me. And it's, uh, I've overcome it several times. It's great, but uh, it's practice, of course. Uh, we read through their thoughts. We're hearing the partner's story. Uh, we want to act like it's the very first time. Even if you've talked about this subject or heard it many, many times before, you have to engage as if it was the first time. This will make you extremely engaging and people will want to talk to you. So um, make sure you treat it as if it was new and unusual information that doesn't pass through our own judgment values and it's not obvious to them. Okay. Uh, it's not an easy level of communication yet. It's extremely captivating and it requires discipline, but it's also the most rewarding for conversations that you'll have socially. And it's especially with members of the opposite sex. They'll be extremely attracted and want to share parts of their lives with you. And you can glean so much information and they'll connect to you deeply as if you're a part of their lives because you're empathetic. Now, most of us, we just don't want to hear that blah, 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 blah. We want the silence. But this is important for us to develop our social acuity and get what we want in life and how to live the dream, okay? Remember, if you can get empathetic quickly with a woman without appearing weak or overly sympathetic, you will attain instant attraction with a woman you're having a conversation with. Particularly if you're observing, you know, regular social boundaries and there is a push-pull going on and a little bit of sexual tension. It doesn't have to be much, okay? Also, uh, men will respect you. And what you want to practice doing is slowing your conversation down to about 10%. Try not to immediately interject your conversation. Wait a moment, pause, take that deep breath, and then go ahead and converse. Okay, so I would like you to practice and get something out of, of this. Take some notes and let's share some examples, no matter how small, next, uh, next time we get together in the Dragon Ship. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, until next time, this is Thor. Skull. Thank uh -huh.